This is very interesting. I went to this page about a week or so ago, high luminosity at Atlas and using the CMOS sensors. I went up here and I commented, you know, here's what's going on, guys. And guess what? <laughs> you can't get to that site anymore. They have, everybody's got in the CMOS that's demonstrated for high energy particles. This goes back to 2016. Here it is right here. And, and, that, and that's the time I told them, I said, you can see these things with CMOS. And now they're going to prototype in 2016. I was telling them about this in 2015. I had part, I had, all my stuff was done. 2015, I had ener, um, dark matter is light on its way to Earth. In the vacuum of space, which is not a vacuum, all that dark matter is there, but it's attached to light particles. They're the carrier of the white particle. And I can show you this. Watch this in a, in a bomb explosion. But remember this. CMOS and luminosity. They're using luminosity to judge how efficient how efficient these particle accelerators are. High luminosity, large hadron collider, increases the number of collisions. Oh, this is fabulous. And what they did was they focused, just like I mentioned to them, is a good idea to do, but they stayed with their high energy particles, and they still have garbage, so they still don't understand. Look at it. Luminosity is an important indicator of the performance of the accelerator. All right? And now they're talking about having, holy smokes, we're going to get, look, High luminosity LHC will produce at least 15 million Higgs bosons per year compared to around 3 million from 2017 before they did this upgrade to focus. Big deal. I can give you hundreds of billions of Higgs per day easily. You see this? These are the particles that CERN and Fermi Lab want, and I showed you them, and I showed you them. These are Higgs fields. This is just like an instant in time. Look at what the, we just have them gobs of them. I'll show you some more. We got coming out of our ears. And the Higgs fields, and they don't realize this, the Higgs fields are when these two particles reattach. They break apart. Here, I'll show you. All right, let's take it one step at a time. And let's see if we can get to free energy and be able to carry these things around. Don't worry about the power grid. Don't worry about Russia knocking down your power grid. You can just walk around with these and you're, you're, you're set to go. All right, now, can we do it? I think maybe we can. Because if they're talking about this being radiation and illumination, uh, luminosity, is an increase in energy, and that is exactly what they say. This is an increase from almost total darkness to extreme, unbelievable amount of luminosity. So what should we be able to get from there? We should be able to get free energy. I showed you the diagram, a little doodle that I did, and I'm hoping that this would work. It's very easy to find out. Can we get more energy after the Venturi than we started with? If we can, we got free energy. And that's, the, that's as simple as that. I'm not going to do this. I'm 74 years old. I'm not done with this. And if nobody will pay any attention to this, and they won't, because they want to spend our money in these huge colliders that is unnecessary. This costs less than 500 bucks, and it can easily lead to free energy well, not necessarily easily. If it, if it works, it'll be very easy. It'll be the most simple thing that can ever be done. All this stuff is on the shelf. Laser, well, we did it. We did it right here. So it's, it obviously can be done if it can be done. If this increased the energy, we're done. Case is closed. We need to make some little engineering things. We've got to make some little devices, which just has a laser built right in next to the receiver with the Venturi in the middle, and we're good to go run it down to regulation devices and all that then have your little dial in here we want to go to this we want to go to that we want to go to this whatever you want of course now it's going to be all digital but this should be looked at right away immediately look at this development of CMOS sensors for CERN 
in 2024, that's two years from now, the Large Hadron Collider will undergo a high luminosity upgrade to better accumulate data using CMOS, which I told them about six, seven years ago. And they're all looking at CMOS now. CMOS for this, CMOS for that. Well, yes, obviously, see development of CMOS sensors for high energy, da 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 high luminosity atlas. Let's see if this one's knocked off now. No, they're showing it. Development of CMOS sensors for high luminosity atlas detector. The other one they took offline. I don't know why. I think I have something to, that should be at least looked at. All right. Luminosity, as I've been telling you, is the glow. It's how bright it is. It's the object, is the measure of the intrinsic brightness and it's the amount of energy the object emits, which is energy is power. Power equals I times E. I is the amperage, the number of electrons, times the energy, which is the, the power, I mean the, the luminosity. Energy, right here it says energy is luminosity. So power equals I times luminosity. Well, we started with low luminosity, we ended up with high luminosity. So we started with low power, we ended up with high power. That's an increase in energy. That's free energy. We need to look at this. If, we, if this works, we can be harvesting energy very, very quickly because, like I say, there's no development need to be done. All these components are here, they just need to be engineered and put together and, and, and then manufactured. I cannot do this. I'm not going to do this. It needs to have somebody that we need a few engineers together. We don't need billions of dollars. Literally, we need very, very little, very little expense to this. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But the expense will be minimal. And if it works, the it could save the world, literally. Okay, this is, uh, and again, this is Don Lincoln and how fast is gravity. And I put this up four days ago and I said, hello, Don, it's Roger Spur. I show the particles you're looking for, I think. Can we please discuss? And I, you know, I'm trying to put him on the spot because he, he won't talk to me and he still won't talk to me. And I don't think anybody can see this. If you come up here and you can see this, I'd love to know about it. Osaka University just did a very similar experiment to my Venturi field crusher. It shows a serious issue with Einstein and the standard model. I said, please watch. Osaka University says they proved Einstein right. So did I. But the proof proves him wrong. So what is it? Einstein was supposedly shown that you could... They, they tried to prove Einstein right. But when they did... They proved them wrong at the same time. Because <laughs> if light can accelerate, the only way you could crush the field is if light can accelerate. I showed light accelerate. So I proved them right. It could crush the field because that's what his, his claim was. The fields could, could collapse. And I could see the collapsing field, but it had to accelerate light. So if it accelerated the light, he's wrong about that, even though he's right about the field collapsing. Okay, you see, once the light is accelerated, it pulls itself right out of the magnetic field. So the, the field, which was a big rounded field, crashed. It, it collapsed. You could see it collapsed. It's just like pulling it out of a, 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 um, accelerating past the speed of sound. Identical. No difference whatsoever. All right, this is just as it's starting to accelerate. The particle is right back in here. And it's like this and like this. And then it has the two glowy particles. So there's two black particles and two glowy ones. And that sets up a field surrounding that particle, which is basically like this. When it comes through the air, everybody's got to get out of the way, so it concusses with everybody. They start to glow. It glows like crazy. But then what happens is because the venturi over here is forcing it to accelerate, the field collapses and a particle shoots right through the center of it. So we see the particle coming out here, but the field has to collapse because the particle is accelerating. It's exactly what I showed you. So if the particle accelerates, that's what makes Einstein wrong. If the field collapses, it makes Einstein right. <laughs> All right, so don't forget, this is just what light is like, basically, but it is starting to accelerate. It's right about here. 
This is right about here, just before the particle is seen emitting from the wave. Then it collapses the wave and then it divides at the Venturi. Then we get all the Higgs fields. They're talking about creating oh, millions of Higgs fields in a year. We got them squirting out like, <laughs> like, like you can't stop them. And I don't think they understand what a Higgs field is. A Higgs field is the co combination back after the white comes out of here all by itself, completely by itself, it's coming squirting through. The blacks go around and then they, they hig back together. The blacks hig back to the whites. <laughs> you want to see a little higging? <laughs> That's higging. Well, what does higging mean? It means coming through the light here is the black and white particles together. I showed you that. Of that there is no question. Once they hit the Venturi they split and the black went on its own and the white came, went in through showers. Of that there is no there's no decision. I mean no uh, confusion about that whatsoever. You can see it's absolutely certain. So we have the blacks separated from the whites. When they come back together that's what you see here. These are the Higgs fields. This is coming straight at us. This is when they start to come back together with the black. Because right here, they're nothing but pure white. If you were standing right in the middle of this right here, you'd be in right in the middle of that whiteness. You'd see nothing but just these little tiny spritz. Here is the tips of the Higgs fields. You see the tip, 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 tip. Here they are. And they are reattaching at this point to the black. Back here in the behind, they haven't caught up to the black yet. There's a few here and there, but primarily the tips are beginning to reattach to the black. That's the fusion, and that's the Higgs. I don't think they understand this. I don't. I think they think that the Higgs. It's like a God particle and all these other particles just somehow emit from nothing.